I'd like to discuss with you the common misconception between a wild garlic and a wild onion. Now, a lot of people think that wild onions are uh, are these right here. See, they have like a chive structure to them. They have a nice bulb on them. But a wild onion, or also known as a ramp, has a red stem just like this. See, they have a leaf structure that's flat. They have a you know single streak down the center of them, and they're flat like blades of grass. You know, this is a a ramp, yeah, and this this is not a wild onion. This is a wild garlic, and if you peel into it, if you just peel into it. You see, you see that clove that I just peeled off of there? Well, it's a garlic, and it has a shell on it, just like a, just like any other clove of garlic. It has a shell on it, and you can peel that shell off. See, you can peel that shell off of there, and when you smell them, they they smell more like a garlic and not really so much like an onion and they're hot. They're hot like garlic is. So that's that's the difference between a ramp, which has a red stem, and a wild garlic. See? A wild garlic just has a green stem and it, it kind of looks like a green onion. It has round round leaves on it that are hollow, kind of like a chive, or some of your green onions. And it does look like a green onion. But it has the, the cloves that grow on the side of it. And the ramp, of course, has a red stem. So that's, that's the difference between the two. And while I've got you here with me, I'd like to discuss with you some of the other uh, wild foods that are available in the springtime. And one of my favorites is the violet. And I got one here to show you. See, this is a violet right here. See how they kind of droop when you turn them to the side? And it's got the streaks. Yeah, most of them are uh, uh, blue or purple in color. But some, uh, uh, some of the violets have the, the purple coloration and they have uh, white petals. See, this is a blue violet here. See, all of them do the same thing. They droop like that. Yeah, these are good eating. Hmm. Another favorite wild edible of mine is prickly lettuce. This is this plant right here. If you look at it very closely, right along the back side, it has what looks like little thorns on it. And they're not thorns, they're just hairs. And a lot of people avoid this plant like it's something to stay away from, but actually, it's a uh, it's pretty much like a dandelion. When you when you break it, it produces a white latex sap, just like a dandelion does. And the leaves kind of look like a dandelion, and it's called prickly lettuce. And you can just eat it right off the branch, like uh, like this, when they're young and tender, or when they get a little bit older, you can uh, you can cut them and. Uh, boil them like like uh, any other pot or uh, so this this is a really good food right here a lot of people overlook it uh, try it sometime and this plant right this plant right here is called yellow curly dock and as you can see it's got the reddish coloration to the stem and uh, these leaves are big you can see it's better to pick the smaller leaves like this here but all of them all of them have that reddish coloration to them and this plant right here is uh, exactly like spinach and if you like spinach you'll love eating this right here because it tastes just like it chews just like it 
and uh, it even smells like it when you cook. Uh, this is one of my favorite plants right here, and uh, I suggest you try it too. You see these little pollen bulbs on, on the pine trees. Those are edible when they come out when they're small. They get woody when they get old. But if you, if you can get them when they're little tiny ones like that, like this, and get them when they're like that, they're completely edible and they even taste good. They have kind of a pine flavor to them. Let me talk about something good. What we get. This plant right here is called the spiny leaf sow thistle. And you see it has the, the reddish coloration to the stems. It's uh, indicative of most of the edible plants that are out there in the wilderness. And it has yellow flowers on it. And you can cook this up just like collard greens. And uh, this is a really good plant to eat. It has a good flavor to it. And it's one of my favorite pot herbs. That's the, the spiny leaved cow thistle. And this plant right here is called plantain. See, you get these little foxtail shaped fruits on it. Uh, you can just eat them just like that. And they got a pretty good flavor to them. There's several different species out there. And you can see the you see the leaves have streaks in them, see? Yeah, and that's the, the common plantain. And the next plant I'd like to introduce is the dandelion. You see the leaves look like that. They have the distinctive reddish coloration on them. And of course the, the flower stems have that same reddish coloration to them. And uh, with the dandelion you can eat the the leaves and the flowers and the roots you can dry the root out um, until it's completely dry roast it grind it up and make coffee out of it and another one of my favorite plants is the wood swirl it has the yellow flowers on it and of course it looks like uh, uh, a clover, you know, like a three-leaf clover, but the difference is the difference between wood sorrel and a clover is the, the sorrel leaves are heart-shaped. See, they look just like a just like a heart. And uh, clover, the clover leaves aren't shaped like that, although they have three leaves, and these have three leaves, uh, the lemon wood sorrel has a heart-shaped leaf and it has the, the distinctive yellow flowers like that and uh, they are kind of sour, they have kind of a lemony flavor to them and it's a really really good plant to eat and this plant here is a common white clover and there's purple clovers also and the flowers off of this plant are edible and they're really good. I happen to like them. And as you can see, it has three petals on the leaves, but they're not heart shaped. So that's the difference between clover and wood sorrel. 